you're an ex-police officer, you're going to be looking for shit like, is he looking up to the right, going, he's trying to access his memory to remember what the fuck happened, or is he looking up to his left uh, to try to manufacture a fucking story? Well, no, I understand that, plus all the other shit. Unfortunately, that doesn't work with people like myself, but it doesn't matter. I'm not wearing sunglasses because I am polite. Welcome to the Father State. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. The Father State is on Patreon, so click the Patreon link in the description point down to support our work. I absolutely appreciate it. So I have with me... One second, sir. I'm sorry, go ahead. I have with me John McAfee, and John only does, I'm told, 30-minute interviews, so we have him for 30 minutes today. John McAfee is the creator of McAfee, antivirus software and former libertarian presidential candidate. John, welcome to the Father State. Thank you for being with me. Thank you very much, uh, Jesse. I appreciate uh, your invitation. So uh, you seem to be a very interesting person. So there are a lot I'd like to know about you real fast. So, John, you were raised, were you raised in a religious family? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Episcopalian. My mother was a, prof- a devout uh, Episcopalian. And my father, I think, was drug along for the convenience. Uh, I was an altar boy at the age of 12, which I carried the crucifix uh, down the the aisle and planted it uh, in front of the altar. Yeah, it was a very religious family. Do you believe that human beings are in a fallen state? I do not. And do why not? not? Well, <laughs> which human beings, my friend? Are we talking about uh, Mother Teresa? Are we talking about Abraham Lincoln? Are we talking about you? Are all, are talking about do me? you believe that all human beings are in a fallen state? No, absolutely not. And absolutely not. I have met, experienced, and shared the grace and light emitted from human beings that were not in a fallen state. And what does it uh, mean? This is my experience. What does it mean to be in a fallen state, in your opinion? <clears throat> Well, it depends on whether you're Christian or Muslim or Buddhist or uh, a Taoist. If you're a Christian, being in fallen state is being out of the grace of God, uh, out of God's light, out of God's radiance. Uh, If you are Buddhist, being in a fallen state means being in a state of absolute ignorance about the truth of your reality. Um, If you're a Taoist, being in a fallen state means you are not in balance with life. I don't know which which of the ten thousand religions on this planet. Which would you like to discuss today? Well, I wanted to, you tweeted out this week. You tweeted that you're seventy four years old, and that you drink two quarts of whiskey every day. You smoke three packs of unfiltered cigarettes a day. Is that true? How do you do that? Why do you do that? Why not? <laughs> What's Why not? It's because it pleases me, because I am free. I'm not bound by your beliefs, your, uh, your rights and wrongs. No, I'm bound by the rights and wrongs of my own heart, and so you which look- I believe are in, in, in sync with the rights and wrongs of the whole fucking universe. So that's why. So you literally drink uh, two quarts of whiskey every day. Every day. They have for 50 years. And does it get you drunk? Miss Janice, am I drunk? No. I started drinking uh, at 9 o'clock this morning. Normally, I drink a half bottle of tequila before noon just to get me started for the day. That's then amazing. I start, I'm sorry, then I start on the serious stuff. Uh, Irish whiskey, uh, scotch. Uh, uh, Janice has made me five massive mojitos uh, using an entire bottle of rum uh, from noon until now. What's wrong with that? Are you able to function without drinking every day? Sir, I was drinking two quarts of whiskey a day and smoking three packs of cigarettes a day when I founded McAfee Associates and turned it into the largest computer security company on this planet. 
I was I was drinking two quarts of booze every day as I started every business that I've ever had. I was drinking two quarts of business of booze a day when I met my wives, had my children, fell in love, understood the meaning of truth. Yes, so, I do. I'm so you drink? Yes. You, you seem to you seem to have a problem with that. So I'm, you drink? I'm seriously confused. <laughs> And you also said that you have a lot of sex. And um, so you have a lot of sex. At 74, you're having a lot of sex, drinking a lot of alcohol, and smoking a lot of cigarettes. Um, yes. Amazing. And what got you started on all this? Are you still having a lot of sex, too, at 74? More than I was at 14. <laughs> 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 yes, indeed. Maybe even more than I was at 24. Listen, as you get older, you get smoother. Please, God, my friend, you know this is true. So, I mean, so you lose, you lose your good looks. Uh, you lose your smooth moves, but you never lose your charisma. And what is it in the end that puts a woman into your sack? It's your charisma. Well, sometimes it's your dollars, or, which I also have an excess on. But yes, of course I do. That's amazing. Much more than ever. Would you consider yourself addicted to all these things? I don't know what that means. Mean if it's addicted means that I refuse to give them up, yes, of course I'm addicted. If addicted means that I can't live without them, then no, I'm not. It's simply that I live better with them. I'm smarter, faster, smoother, more on the ball, more capable of making decisions more courageous, more loving, more kind. That's not amazing. Just drug, not just with booze and cigarettes, but with all drugs. I've taken every drug on the planet. They're all fucking spectacular. I'm sorry, but there you have it. <laughs> That's amazing. Amazing. I want to ask you about cryptocurrency. I know we don't have a lot of time, but for those who don't really follow it, explain cryptocurrency. What is it, and what is uh, Bitcoin? Well, let me talk about crypto instead of Bitcoin. Okay. Okay. Fifteen years ago, uh, about a dozen <clears throat> very clever programmers invented a new mathematical paradigm called the blockchain. Now, what's the blockchain? The blockchain is a record of reality that can never be changed. Never. What's wrong with, with our normal ledgers and records of reality? What is history? History is written by the conquerors. Uh, the Portuguese and Spanish stormed into Central and South America, um, burned hundreds of thousands of Mayan books, good Lord, and left four out of 200,000 burned them and wrote the history of the Spanish conquest of the new world. <laughs> so we don't know what's true, do we? All we know is what conquerors write. Truth can't possibly be solely in the hands of the most powerful, of the strongest, the most brutal, the destroyers. Surely, if that is true, then God is indeed a demon. But he's not. He's not. So therefore, our histories can not be true. The blockchain, the first technology in human history that gives us the opportunity to write a record that can't be changed ever. Now, on top of that, the very first system that was created was cryptocurrencies. Why? Because the blockchain allows for a new paradigm of money where there's no control, no permission. You need permission to use the dollars you have. If you don't think so, then <laughs> you, you haven't looked closely. No, it's a permissionless and far more important, a trustless system. You no longer have to trust the person you're doing business with. The mathematics of the blockchain take care of that for you. Do you understand the freedom that that gives? 
the human species. That's what cryptocurrency is, a short course. So has cryptocurrency been around for a long time and we're just hearing about it? Or what what happened to it's it? Been around, it's been around for 11 years, 12 years. Oh, okay. 12, 12. Um, it's not a long time in terms of technology, especially not digital technology. The first computer, or digital computer, was invented in the late 1940s. It's been 70 years. So 11 years is not much in the history of digital technology. So do you um, predict that it'll be around for a long time, cryptocurrency? Yes. I mean, it's one of those things like the wheel. I mean, it's as, it's as important as the wheel. When the wheel was first invented some 3,000 years ago, it changed human society forever. It took those, those steps that were impractical, um, energy-wasting, slow, to something that was the most perfect way to transport from point A to B, whether you're going up a mountain, down a mountain, or on a flat piece of land. So the wheel next to fire, the greatest possible discovery in human history. Let me add one cryptocurrency. I would, put number, I would put number three as cryptocurrency. Will it replace the dollar bill eventually, you think? Of course. It's doing it now. <laughs> How about... Yeah, it's, replacing, it's replacing all fiat currencies now. And what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is one of the cryptocurrencies. It was the first one. Very old technology, 12 years old. It's creaky. It's ancient. It's an antique. It's got no privacy. And no security, and no smart contract capability, no distributed application capability, it's going to die. However, what Bitcoin did give us was a door into a fertile field in which magical, amazing, nearly infinite technologies had been planted and have grown. I mean, currencies like Monero. <laughs> Nobody uses Bitcoin anymore, not uses. I'm not talking about trades it. Who cares? The people who trade it don't know what cryptocurrency is. Nobody uses Bitcoin. It used to be the only use. That was its value. The only coin used today, there are two. Bitcoin, or I'm sorry, <laughs> Monero <laughs> and DAI. Monero, the first and most profoundly powerful privacy coin, and DAI, the first stable uh, cryptocurrency, which has never in years varied more than 1% from the US dollar in its value. I mean, to even imagine the intense technologies required to do this and with the blockchain so trivial. For people who don't know about uh, cryptocurrency or Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin, how can one get involved in it? What is the first step? <laughs> I wish there were a Bitcoin 101 or a cryptocurrency 101 or a blockchain 101 or a blockchain for dummies, but there's not, not to my knowledge. Um, you simply have to go onto Google, use your own will, desire, and knowledge, and talents, and figure it out. I wish I could. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I mean, I could help you, but it would take me weeks. Oh, okay. To do to, to you enough uh, to make it useful. No, you got to, this is one of those things, unfortunately, only those who are awake, willing, and have the courage are in cryptocurrency now. But once you get in it, you feel, you see, you experience the infinite power of a new branch of mathematics that's never before been conceived of. You predicted that Bitcoin would be worth a million dollars 
by the end of 2020. Do you still stand by that prediction? I never stood by that prediction. I'm pleased. Okay, that was made. Okay, there in the crypto community, there are people called Bitcoin maximalists. I mean, people who simply, <laughs> as far as I know, have an IQ of less than four, and simply because Bitcoin was the first, is therefore the greatest. Um, and they were predicting all kinds of things. Bitcoin's going to hit thirty thousand dollars. We all know it would never hit thirty thousand. So I just, for fun, I was going to say, yes, uh, Bitcoin will hit a hundred thousand. My advisor said, no, no, people don't believe that. Yeah, you know, nobody's going to believe that. So I said, well, how about a million? I said, yeah, no one will believe that. <laughs> That's really, if Bitcoin hit a million dollars, you understand. That it's if you run the numbers, anybody can multiply and divide, can do this, then the value of Bitcoin would be greater than the gross domestic product of the entire continent of North America. I mean, that's Mexico, China, I mean, I mean Mexico, the United States, Canada, Nova Scotia. <laughs> Please. It's impossible. Nothing, no corporation, no creation of man has ever been that powerful. And Bitcoin's gonna become that powerful in two years. <laughs> but but people unfortunately believed it. Yeah. I, my, I regret, I mean, but if- Well, listen, I'm glad you cleared that able, up. And so- no, sir, I mean, would, you, would you say that uh, the future of cryptocurrency in, in general is good? And, well, not just good, it's the only option we have, people. It's the only option we have, I mean, when Henry Ford created the automobile, the, the first one that came off of assembly line was the Model T. I mean, anybody with a brain could see, all right, the age of the horse is over. It's over. There will not be any more profitable buggy whip manufacturers back to life. And that came true. Same thing here. I mean, if you compare the power, the ease, the privacy, the trustless, permissionless nature of cryptocurrency, absolutely, my friend. <laughs> no one will be using the dollar or the yen or the, the British pound or the euro in five years. Yeah, I was going to ask, what do you predict, uh, believe, believe the future of the cash is? What? What's going to happen with cash? I think in five years, I think in five years, no one will even remember what a dollar is <laughs> or, or a euro. Amazing. Um, I, I want to ask you about marriage. I hear that you're married and that you're married to a black woman. Is that true? You're married to a black woman? <laughs> well, she's kind of black. Janice, would you come here, please? <laughs> this gentleman wants to know whether you're black or not. I mean, you know, most people say, no, she's white. Come on, let me sit here, please. <laughs> most people claim she's white. However, she claims she's, she's fucking black. So tell me. Come on. Come on. Okay. No, you may look and see, please. To me, she looks like a white, a white chick from Boston. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh she, she yeah. black. I don't think so. It's ridiculous. I've known black women, dude. I have known black women, all right? I mean, she, in no way, I mean, yeah, her skin's a bit dark. Who fucking cares yes, what can. your skin color is? Shut up. I'm just saying. What's your name? What's your name, your first name? Do Janice. I? Janice, it's good to meet you. It's nice to meet you as well. Yeah. How are you today? Amazing. Is he behaving himself? Yeah, he's carried on. Sound like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're an honest man, uh, Jesse. I, I have carried on. Yes. <laughs> what a man. <laughs> yes. So what is it like being, married, being a white guy married to a black woman? How is that working out? <sighs> I mean, I, it's, it's scary. <laughs> well, you're a black guy. You've surely at least lived with black women, right? I have. Watch yourself. Okay, it's I'm a, just saying. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I don't care. I don't care if she stabs me. All right, which is possible. Um, no, black women make the best mothers on earth. Amazing. I mean, bar 
fucking none. But the problem is, husbands are just another goddamn child. Yes, you are. Woman, right? <laughs> saying, right? This is the fucking problem. Right? So, Janice, what is it like being married to him? He drinks and smokes every day, and yes, every day. He's so open. What is it like being married to him? It is, um, yeah. <laughs> Be honest. It's, you know, truth. it's um, yes. He's a big child mostly all the time. <laughs> so, so no, but it's it's never a dull moment. I will say that. That's for, for sure. sure. I can tell that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but listen, did that didn't that prove what I said? How did she refer to me? Big a, child. A child. <laughs> Black women are the best mothers, but every human on the planet, except for their own mothers and fathers, are their children. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. There is the well, issue. A, if you can live, you if you can live with that, <laughs> then it's well, heaven on earth. How long I mean, you guys been married? Be eight years. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Well, good to meet you, Janice. It's nice to meet you as well. <laughs> I will let you guys get back. All right, thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, admittedly, yeah, she looks black. She does. Uh, oh, she black. But she's not. She's not. She's she's a white girl from Boston. I'm telling you now. She's, I don't know, pretending. That's all I can say. Uh, John, you said that uh, privacy doesn't exist on the Internet anymore. Is that true? I wish it wasn't true. I really do. I mean, I would give one of my legs uh, if I could make it not true. But it, it is true. And why there do you no say privacy. it's not privacy is not doesn't doesn't exist anymore on the internet? How do, how do you know that? And what can we do about it? Come over to your center, well, Elena. I, I know that. I know that because. Hey, John. I, I did. I did. Yes. Slide over to your. Is it left or right? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Oh yeah, right there. Right. Um, I'm in the center. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I know that because. Oh, I'm John McAfee. I, I started the world's largest computer security organization. And if you are in computer security and you're any good at all, you're the best hacker in the world. I mean, I ask you, would you go to buy a safe to put all of your valuables in? And you ask the company owner, can you break into your competitors' safes? And they go, no, I have no clue. Would you buy a safe from him? I would go to the guy who said, yeah, I can break into all of my competitors' safe <laughs> yeah. and any safe. But this is the best I can do. I'd say, I'll take it. So, no, I, I found it in the world's largest, largest computer security company. And people, I'm telling you now, you have no security. Not from the people that matter. Yeah, the average hacker, yeah, it's going to be hard for him or her. <laughs> to get anything but from the CIA, the NSA, the Secret Service, the covert agencies within American uh, um, military, Air Force, Army, Navy, uh, the Mossad, uh, uh, Russia. No. <laughs> there are so, no secrets from them. So what no should we do? No secrets, people. Shall, shall we avoid putting certain things about our lives on the Internet? Mm -hmm. It, well, I, I can't tell you. I mean, it depends on you. All I can tell you is that please be aware that every single word that you ever type or speak, every image, every video is watched and recorded by these government agencies that are so far advanced than any of the companies providing protection against them. No, there are none. There's only one thing left that you can keep private, and that is where you are. And that's what Janice and I have done. Now, how do we do that? We can't own smartphones. <laughs> Please, people, they're, they're, they're the biggest spy devices ever created. Why? They are designed for one thing. I mean, you think you buy uh, an S10 for $700 and yeah, no, it probably costs 10 times that to make it. Now, why do they do it? 
because what they get their money from is the advertisers and marketers and people trying to gouge money out of your pocket by selling you shit. Where are you? Oh, you're next to a shoe store. Oh, I noticed that you bought shoes just two years ago. Some brown loafers are probably wearing out. Uh, I'm going to send an ad to you. Make a right here, and there's brown loafers at half price. Now, this is what they want. Now, since the phones are designed to designed to accommodate this, <laughs> sorry, then people who want to know where you are, what you're doing, what you bought, who aren't trying to sell you something, but instead are trying to monitor you, check up on you, see if you're doing something wrong, or in the end, collect you. And sir, are you, are you an ex-police officer? Am, am I? No, I'm not. Yes. No, I'm not. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I've got bad information. What in is, any case. What's the one thing we can do about this? Now? Is there one thing we as citizens can do about this? You're not going to like it, and you're not going to do it. That's what Janice and I have done, which is throw away our cell phones. Yeah, That's I believe that. You can do. I What's that? I totally believe you on that. No, I'm telling you. That's all. You throw away your cell phones, at least they're not going to know where you are. Because Janice and I, for a year now, have been underground in hiding. And I know that the feds, uh, many governments are watching and listening to everything that I say, but not one of them knows where I am. That's the last remaining shred of privacy that we own, people. That's amazing. You, um, you, um, and, and I want to, I got to throw you in the hot seat in one minute here, but tell me, how did you, how did you come up with the antivirus uh, formulation company? What, how did you, how did you get started? creating that it's like every successful company from microsoft to apple to you you name it uh opportunity uh, with me as my brother-in-law a really worthless uh, fellow by the way <laughs> hadn't had a job for years and was living with my ex-wife and i was her brother right right Thorn in my side on a Sunday morning in San Jose, California. He was reading on the back page a little article that said, Hey, this is interesting. They found this thing called a computer virus. I go, What? Give me that. So I read the article. It was the, the virus, the world's first computer virus, the Pakistani brain, was written by two brothers in Lahore, Pakistan. They owned a computer repair shop. They were clearly brilliant and worth and wrote the first true artificial intelligence program. Because what is what is it? What is life? I mean, isn't it the drive to survive and replicate? Is it not? It can't get more simple than that, right. folks. <laughs> survive and propagate yourself any way you can. Well, that's what this virus did. I was fascinated. I wanted to hire those guys, but I couldn't get in touch with them. Uh, in any case, I um, I just wrote a little program because it became simple. It became easy. When I saw, because I got the source code from Stanford University the following day, I had disassembled it the next 24 hours. And then the next 24 hours had figured out exactly how it did it. It's clever. Whoa. The most clever piece of code I've ever seen. But at the same time, I go, ah, well, here are you, you mofos, and <laughs> here's how I can stop you. So I wrote a little program to locate it and kill it. Amazing. I just put it up on my bulletin. We didn't have the internet back then, folks. This was 1987. But I did own and operate the largest bulletin board system in Silicon Valley called Homebase. 32 phone lines coming into it. I just dropped the program up. And what used to work, you didn't just spread things around the world on the internet. No, you had your own bulletin board system. Your users would download programs. If they were useful, they would upload them to other bulletin board systems where it was done over and over and over. In two weeks, I had 2 million users. Two months later, I had $10 million in the bank. I didn't plan any of this shit. I just did what I normally and, and <laughs> always do. 
Um, and if you think it's any different for Bill Gates or, no, I know Bill. I know, I, I knew Steve Jobs very well. Both of them was all an opportunity. They didn't have a plan. Yeah. If you got a plan to succeed in life, throw it away, people. It won't work. Amazing. Why? Well, no, hang on. Here's the reason. Life is infinite. Our minds are finite, tiny, crude implements. Life has no room for human plans. Never has, never will. But life offers, offers up opportunities a thousand times a day. Grab one, people. Now, what does it cost to grab an opportunity? For me, it costs everything. I lost my wife, I lost my wife. Of course, my job at Lockheed Corporation, my friends, everything that I believed in, everything burned and evaporated in a matter of weeks. That's what happens when you take an opportunity. You think the same thing didn't happen to Bill Gates? Please, God, people, <laughs> wake up. Yes, it happens to everybody, Larry Ellison and Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, everybody that's a success. None of us had a fucking plan. <laughs> Do you think your tiny mind can conceive of something that life is going to incorporate just because you conceived of it? No, it doesn't happen that way, people. Life instead offers you an infinite number of possibilities, opportunities, chances. Are you going to take them or not? That's it. That's 99 deep. out of 100. I'm sorry? That's deep. I absolutely understand and agree with you on that, 100%. That's amazing. <laughs> so... <laughs> I got to throw you on the hot seat now. It's time to heat up this interview okay. and throw Good. you on the we hot seat. Listen, we're running late. We I have know. time for the hot seat. The yes. hot seat question. Throw it, And please. so you need to answer as quickly as possible. The hot seat. About how many women have you slept with in your lifetime? I have 10, 20,000. Will Trump presidency kill political correctness? I have no clue. How long will it take for the U.S. economy to recover from this Chinese virus? I don't think it will. Is formal education the enemy of common sense? What kind of education? Here's the problem. What is common sense? Uh, common sense is not very, <laughs> not very common, my friend. I'm just saying. <laughs> should, homosexuality, should homosexuality be taught in the schools? Taught how? I mean, what, through, through demonstrations on stage? I, <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> what you're saying, I, I can't answer. It's too vague. Who was the most corrupt president in U.S. history? You're shitting me. <laughs> Richard Nixon. Is it possible to have inner peace? Yes. Oh, fuck it. I'm sorry. For the fuck. <laughs> Yes. Do you have Why? inner peace? <laughs> Do I ever? <laughs> and how people, is it possible? People, people, let me explain something to you, please. I need to interrupt the flow, okay. if you don't mind. All right. Um, Janice and I, we just got out of jail in the Dominican Republic uh, nine months ago. We've been underground uh, ever since. We've been on the run for over a year from the US government wrongly trying to collect us because I refused to file tax returns to support the, the corrupt monstrosity that is the American government. Um, <laughs> in spite of that, in spite of the chaos around me, which has been around me since for 50 years, there is no more peaceful person on this planet because I, I, I am perfectly content with what life brings through this door. Whatever it is, I mean, let me tell you, four days, okay, yeah, all right, you, you've 
jail aficionados out there. Yeah, four days and four days in the Dominican Republic. Listen, have you ever been in a Dominican Republic jail? No goddamn bathrooms, concrete floor, no mattresses, no beds, no running goddamn water. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> I'm insisting that four days there is at least 40 in the American jail. And I've been imprisoned 11 times in nine different countries for various offenses, none of which were, in my mind, criminal acts, possession of drugs, crossing a border illegally, <laughs> speaking out against corrupt regimes. Uh, yes, 11 times. So, yeah, okay, so you go, yeah, that's nothing. Well, maybe, 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 this is your choice. But I promise you, you get your ass to the Dominican Republic <laughs> and you break a law. And then you tell me what fucking jail is. In any case, uh, we were there just for four days. Uh, insignificant number of days for the number of days I have been in jails. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, and yet, I, I think Janice just left for something, probably more booze. Oh, that's why I'm out of, <laughs> I'm out of Jameis and Iris whiskey. Um, Amazing. So we are uh, as peaceful as people can be. So anyway, I'm sorry for interrupting. I'm glad to hear that. Questions. Are you okay with social media companies censoring conservatives? I'm not okay with social media companies censoring anything. Yeah. I mean, including you know, sex with dead whales. If that's what it is, I'm sorry. You don't want to watch it? Don't watch it. Don't (laughs) click on it. Don't view it, people. How long did it take to hit the fucking back button? The back button. Yeah. Who do you Please. support for president? Nobody. Doesn't matter who's president. The, our system is a car with a broken steering wheel. It, it doesn't matter who's driving. Is there a race war going on in America? Yes, there always has been. It just changes race from time to time. In 1945, the race war had nothing whatsoever to do with blacks or uh, Eskimos, Mexicans. No, it had to do with Japanese, Japanese only. You realize we put millions of Japanese in fucking concentration camps in 1943. So I don't know. Give me a date. I'll tell you if there's a race war. Yes, there's always been a race war. Right now, it's whites against blacks. It keeps rising. It's ugly fucking head, people. If we look at Minnesota, the city is burning. Well, thank God that someone is doing something about it. A police officer, and I've been arrested way more times I've gone to jail, has his knee in a black man's throat crushes his larynx and kills him on video people on fucking video amazing you think there's not a goddamn race war and john do you, you have a re- yes do you have a relationship with your children i have 48 children which of the 48 you have 48 children i do are they you made them I, I, did I make them? No, I, God made them. I provided some sperm. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's all I did. <laughs> and, do, <laughs> and do you have you have a relationship with all 40, 48 children? I do not. You do not, not? With a very small, very small minority. Well, here's why. I mean, most of the mothers I, I knew for her. A couple of nights at the most. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, they're in Taiwan and Vietnam and Canada and South America, Brazil, Belize, Guatemala. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I got around when I was a young man. Uh, no, most of them hate me. Uh, 75% of them sued me for child support. I'm not even sure I'm the father of at least 15% of them, but I'm accepting it. I don't know why. I <laughs> why, why resist? That's why right. fucking resist? Amazing. So, John, did you have fun? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, listen, 
my friend, how old are you, by the way, uh, I, Jesse? I just turned 71 this past Friday, May 22nd. No way! Yeah. You look 30. Amazing. All right. Black don't well, cry, John. Amazing. So now, Jesse, can we be honest with each other? Yes. As two, as two men in their 70s? Yes. It was any sexual relationship in your life, uh, which lasted more than an hour, a waste of time? Or was it not fun? I'm just curious. Show me, can you point to one sexual relationship that wasn't a blast? I cannot. Everyone was not a waste of time, and they all were a blast. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> you said, did I have fun? Duh. <laughs> <laughs> so John how can people keep up with you at official McAfee on Twitter that's the only channel I'm on and I'm sorry to be a um, <laughs> an elitist but uh, but Twitter's where it's at people you'll figure it out eventually I'm sorry Donald Trump with an IQ of 12 figured it out so you will eventually <laughs> Do you love the great white? <laughs> hey, John, you know I I'm call, sorry. You know I call the president the great white hope because he's so amazing. Well, <laughs> whatever. Listen, I I'm not politically inclined in any way. I'm right. not. I'm not against anybody or for anybody. I mean, you know, I, I just uh, Trump is seriously clever in one talent area: putting money in his pocket. Well, you've got to give that mofo some credit. I mean, does he not put money in his pocket? Yeah. Oh, he, yes. Well, he is a brilliant praise, businessman. Yes, we should praise that divinity of putting money in his pocket. Other than that, I, I'm sorry, I just don't know. I, I do not think that he is the brightest candle um, on the altar. You might be wrong on that, I believe, because look how great he was making and is still making America in spite of everybody trying to stop him, he's making America great again. Why don't you... Oh, Janice said he got to quit after this. Why don't you... Um, let me give you a challenge. All right. Why don't you wait two months and see where America is after we have 30% unemployment, which we already do, and these people are defaulting on their mortgages and the mortgage companies are going out of business. And the small businesses who have been out of business for two and a half months are, are dying. And our airlines, which are the backbone of transportation for the world, are going out of business. Why don't you ask yourself then, how great do you think Donald Trump is, my friend? Amazing. John, I have you to are... run now. Janice, Janice gave me the sign. All right. It Listen, was. It... You know about black women. I'm married to one who just said this. <laughs> uh, I'm getting off, dude. And once you go I'm black, getting... once you go back black, John, you can't go back. <laughs> Thank you this so much. This is not the first you. black. This is my my friend. This is not the first black woman I have been with. Not by a long shot. I mean, maybe maybe she's three or four hundred uh, in in sequence. Ooh. But, but <laughs> this I know. This I wouldn't say go like this. Uh, I gotta leave you. Right on, John. It was a. <laughs> It was an honor to talk to you, man. You're a very interesting person. Thank you for your time. <laughs> and thank you, Jesse. Goodbye. All right, All right now. <laughs> Amazing. That was John McAfee. And uh, don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, share, signing, ring the bell. Don't forget to merge. And thank you for your support. For you. It's because of you You're, this is happening. And eventually we're going to be back on the Father's Day set. So that's coming soon, all right? Thank you. Next time on The Fallen State. This is going to be a great interview because you met your match here, Jesse. I don't get emotional. I'm going to be very intellectual and heartfelt. Right on. So get ready for it, okay? All right. You came from a family. I came from a family. Why do you think the family is not being pushed in the black community today? I was told today we weren't talking about family values. Maybe my publicist got the wrong information. I was told we were talking about Destiny's Child. And if we're not talking about Destiny's Child, then we certainly 
certainly need to reschedule this interview. Yeah, we'll get into that now. And that's why I'm asking. We're talking about the success of your kids due to having a family. Am I right? If they have families the way you and I did, would they be in jail? Would there be poverty? Would there be all this stuff happening? Well, I can't answer that for you. So it's a different age, a different era. Again, thank you for the opportunity. Bye. Are you about to run? He ran. That was Beyonce's daddy. for watching The Fallen State. We need your continued support. Donate to my nonprofit here. Subscribe and like the videos here. And tell everybody and their mama about the show. <laughs>